It is the perfect day for a cup of hot tea and a child-free video. Ah, stop, stop. See, I have a bit of a confession to make. I don't want to have kids. Zero, none, zilch, ever. No kids for me at all. And how many of us can relate to that statement? This is a really personal subject for me because for as long as I can remember, I never wanted to have kids. And for as long as I can remember, all my life people have tried to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about when I say that I don't want to have kids. Do people ever tell other people that they shouldn't have kids? Because I don't think I've ever heard an adult say to a kid or to maybe a young adult that they shouldn't have kids. The aha moment came to me when I was a teenager, when I realized that, okay, while I may at some point in my life get married and have a house and all those things, I just didn't want to become a mother. That is the most relatable thing ever. But of course, back then, everybody told me that I would change my mind. And honestly, the fact that everybody was trying to convince me otherwise made me feel like I was the only person in the world, the only woman in the world who didn't want to have kids. I keep seeing this comment that pops up underneath my videos and it's something to the effect that I'm following an agenda by not having kids or that the agenda got me and that's why I'm not having kids. And I'm always like, what agenda are people talking about? We're just making a different lifestyle choice. I'm not following any kind of agenda when I choose not to have kids. I'm just not having kids because I don't want to be a mom. So life went on. I turned 20 and 25 and 30. And while I still knew that I definitely didn't want to have kids of my own accord, I was kind of half expecting for this magical motherly instinct to kick in and tell me that in fact, I should be having kids right now. Yeah, the motherly instinct thing, I'm just not sold on it because I kind of felt the same way. Like you're waiting for something to happen because everyone tells you that it's going to happen. So for all of you out there that are kind of waiting for that like feeling to hit you, that maternal thing to hit you, you know what? It just may not happen. Some of us just don't get that. And that doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. I've never heard anybody say that to my husband. They're not like, well, you're eventually just gonna feel maternal and you're gonna wanna be a dad. Why do they only say that to women? Is it because the woman's the one who's pregnant? Or are women just expected to be the more maternal one? Because I can guarantee you, my husband is better with children than I am. Chocolate chai. Yeah, that's not my favorite. But something else happened. So the older I get, <laughs> the more people take me seriously. And the more they realize that when I say I don't want to have kids, I may actually mean it. Instead of saying that I will change my mind, they now say, who's gonna take care of you when you're old? What if you regret it? Oh, that's so selfish. When you're younger, people just assume you don't know what you want and that's kind of how they talk to you. When you're older, they can't say that to you anymore because you actually have some life experience. So now that we're adults, it's almost like they're trying to put the fear in us. Like if you don't have kids, these bad things will happen. Or if you don't have kids, these will be these massive regrets that you have. Mm, isn't that really unnatural? So where are you gonna find the meaning of life? So what's the point of you being here? Well, if you keep talking like that, you're gonna lead to the extinction of the human race. People say this all the time. I am like, how many billions of people are there on the earth? I'm pretty sure we have a long way to go before the human race is extinct. And you know, I totally agree that there's a lot of people out there, maybe including yourselves, who find there to be so much meaning in having and raising children. And that's totally cool. Good for you, I'm happy for you. It's just not where I find my meaning. And that should also be fine. I've never watched any of her videos before, so I don't know anything about her, but I wonder if she's doing like a minimalist thing or a cabin thing. I think I'm gonna just go check out her channel after I'm done this because she looks like she has a really interesting lifestyle. I find my meaning in my work, in the relationships that I have with people other than my potential kids. And the same applies to my legacy, assuming that I even want to legacy because you know, when I die, it's kind of irrelevant what I leave behind. I can't imagine that once we die, we're really gonna be concerned about what's happening in the world anymore. But assuming that I wanted to leave a legacy, I would hope for that to be through the work that I leave behind. Some of the thoughts, the trips, the videos, the writings that I leave behind. Let's just, for the sake of this conversation, say you want to leave a legacy. The best legacy that you could leave is one that you're truly invested in, something you actually really, really want to do. Parenting and having kids is just not gonna be that thing that speaks to us. It's not gonna be in our hearts to do that. But before we dive deep into debunking some of the common myths around choosing not to have children, let's take it back. 
I'm talking right back to the 1500s. As early as the 1500s, women in northwestern Europe began to postpone marriage in their mid-twenties, as opposed to getting hitched in their early teens. The dresses these ladies are wearing are like next level. I wish I had a dress like that. I mean, where would I wear it to? I don't know but I just like them. This meant that women could work and have greater financial independence as opposed to, you know, devoting themselves to the usual life of homemaking duties. In fact, prior to the French Revolution, it is estimated that at least 15 to 22% of the adult population remained single and without children. The world's been through this before. We're just going through it again. Well, what if your husband or partner wants to have kids? Well, then we wouldn't be together. <laughs> I really wish that people would direct that question to my husband. I think he'd have a pretty clever answer for it. I would never have a kid just to please my partner. That, that is such, a, a, such an alien abstract thought to me. The comment that gets me the most like, oh my goodness, like I'm LOLing at this is when people are like, your husband's gonna take a second wife. Okay, in some places in the world that happens. I live in Canada. That kind of thing is frowned upon here. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's illegal. Of course, in reality, I have had relationships break down because I didn't want to have kids and they did. That's common. People change their minds and that's also fine. If you haven't found anyone right now and you're kind of like feeling down in the dumps about it, don't compromise and marry someone that wants kids. The child-free community is growing and hopefully in the future, it will be easier to find a partner that doesn't want kids. With the rise of industrialization, women, and especially women living in larger cities who had access to education and improved standards of living, became more aware of various forms of birth control. By the 1900s, at least one in five American women born between 1885 and 1915 never had children. Oh, so our stats are like kind of the same right now. As child-free people, we've always been representing. Oh, I just had to get some chapstick. My lips are super dry. Okay, moving on. Childlessness rates also continued to rise across Western Europe, Canada and Australia throughout the First World War and Great Depression. However, this all changed after World War II. <sighs> Following the war, the Western world saw a massive spike in childbirths, giving rise to the generation that we affectionately know as the baby boomers. When the baby boomer thing happened, there was maybe like a bit of a shift in the way that people thought that, well, you just have to have kids. That's just the thing that you do. And so now being child free is kind of like a foreign thing again and something that people have to get used to. A lot of this change can be attributed back to a series of government incentives and projects encouraging people to have kids. Hey, that reminds me, we bought a hammock maybe like three or four years ago. We've never used it. I wonder where that is. If you're from the United States, you might be familiar with the GI Bill, which aimed to support returning veterans from World War II and their families with affordable and available mortgages and stipends, covering tuition and expenses for education. Oh yes, governments definitely want you to have babies because it's great for their GDP. But Here in Canada, there's pretty generous maternity and paternity leave and you do get child benefits. The benefits in Canada kind of look like this. If this is your household income, this is what you would get per kid. And if your household income is this, you would be getting this. But this trend was relatively short-lived. By the 1970s, attitudes started changing all over again and birth rates started to slow down once again, returning to pre-World War II levels. Women suddenly had more access to birth control and were starting to get full-time jobs. And I think women started taking back their autonomy to make decisions and not just do the thing that they were told that they had to do. And then there's the question of, well, who's gonna take care of you when you're old and aren't you just gonna die alone then? The thing that always drives me crazy when people say this is that I personally know multiple elderly people who have children and their children live nowhere near them. These elderly people are going through health challenges. You know where the help is coming from? It is coming from a community of people that is not biological. What I'll do is I'll get to live out my old days with friends and animals and non-blood Thai family, you know, <laughs> basically in a commune with friends. That is my big dream is to set up a place like that where a bunch of us can live together and just have fun. And in that community of people that we're building, we're all gonna be able to help each other out in different ways when people need it. And that's kind of the whole point is to be able to help others out when they need it and they help you out when you need it. So when people ask me, what about a family? Will you never have a family? I just think that that question comes from a lack of 
a broad enough understanding of what a family unit can be. There's so many communities and groups that we can be involved in and build friendships outside of our actual families. Obviously, it's fantastic if you're friends with your family. And now we come to my favorite takeaway from this video, a notion that most people find so shocking that they instantly go into denial. So don't go into denial on me. The idea that people, women, have a maternal instinct is a hoax. Yeah, I checked it out. There's a lot of people that are like, yeah, that's not even a thing. But yet yeah, somehow it's been passed down year after year after year. And people are still telling us that our maternal instinct will kick in. I guess maybe it's like a tradition thing. I don't know. Those can be hard to break. Science says that it doesn't exist. You can Google this, by the way. There's lots of academic papers on this stuff. The belief in the maternal instinct has real power because it's a reinforced shared belief that we have across many different communities all around the world. We just can't all be expected to be doing the same thing and be happy with it. Yeah, we're opting out of some stuff that we don't wanna deal with and we don't wanna go through, but that's a good thing when you don't wanna experience it. Okay, so here's some of my predictions for what the future holds for the child-free community. Prediction number one, don't worry. Humanity will not go extinct. I mean, there's 8 billion of us on the planet today, and the vast majority of that 8 billion number are choosing to have kids. In fact, in the next 30 years, the world population is set to skyrocket to 10 billion people. Okay, hang on. The cat will not stop crying. He's scratching at the door. You have to be very quiet because I'm trying to film something, okay? My main prediction is that with time, more and more people will feel more comfortable and validated in their choice not to have kids. And I have seen this play out in my own lifetime. The more the individuals are gonna start seeing that child-free is an option and seeing people openly living child-free lives and not being scared to talk about it is really gonna encourage them to think about whether or not they actually want kids. And I think that's what it comes down to. Isn't that right? Cats are a lot easier than kids. Oh, and on that note, stop asking people, when are you gonna have kids? <laughs> it just makes people uncomfortable. It is not a good question. It's always gonna be just a little strange to me that it is socially acceptable to ask people when they're having kids. Maybe instead of talking about that topic, we could focus the attention on things that are acceptable to talk about, like this.